Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bilal Walker. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Almunir LLC. Um, my wife and I operate a um, education consulting organization um, that supports nonprofits, schools, and uh, grassroots organizations in developing culturally responsive community engagement efforts. Um, that could look like us developing curriculum for a school. Um, that could also look like us coming in and hosting diversity, equity, and inclusion um, training for our staff. Um, and it currently looks like a lot of placemaking um, efforts. Um, and so I, I want to say thank you for allowing me to present today. I'm really excited to be here with uh, fellow members of North Community Food Systems. Thank you so much, Tobias, for putting this together. Um, I'm a teacher by trade. Um, I've been working in education over five years, and I've worked as a middle school um, social studies teacher and as an assistant dean. I've also worked as an operations coordinator. And I currently um, sit as the program manager for policy and advocacy for Newark's Opportunity Youth Network, which currently operates the state's uh, first and only alternate route high school. Um, and so I say all that to say that I'm extremely passionate about advocacy and empowering community members to see themselves as stakeholders in the communities that they actually live in and not just people who are paying to live somewhere. Um, and so as I've you know, traversed my career um, in education, um, my ideas of what my career path are, are really more so around um, being an advocate, a po policy analyst, and a placemaker. Um, and one of the things that um, I love about placemaking um, is that it's inclusive. And for those of you who don't know, placemaking has a ton of different definitions, but uh, placemaking in short is um, the convergence of people, arts, business, community in an equitable uh, fashion so that where there's opportunities for redevelopment, um, community members have the opportunity to own, operate, and um, advocate for the changes that they want to see within their community. And so as I, I began to think about um, what my placemaking strategies look like in terms of urban farming, I really believe that there's opportunity for technology, um, streets and transportation, public markets, uh, governance, health and well-being, equity and inclusion, and eco economic development to all kind of live through um, the work that I'm currently doing as an urban farmer. Um, we currently operate two urban farms within the city, one in the North Broadway neighborhood and one in the South Broad Street neighborhood, where we've transformed vacant lots into urban farms that we hope will uh, act as places where arts, culture, agriculture, and community can all convene. And so, again, our neighborhoods are the North Broadway neighborhood and uh, the South Broadway neighborhood. The North Broadway neighborhood um, is really interesting. It's predominantly Latino. Um, and there's also African-American population. And our farm is really located directly off of Route 21. Um, so it's in the middle of uh, everything, but also nothing at the same time because we're at the bottom of Grafton Avenue. Um, but nonetheless, this uh, vacant property uh, sat vacant for quite a while, over 10 years. Um, this property here uh, was being riddled with a lot of trash and toxic waste. Um, and I was really captivated by the graffiti um, and the just aesthetic of the artwork um, inside of the garden. And I thought, wow, it'd be really interesting to see what this place will look cleaned up and how we could get people into a place like this around something bigger than ourselves. Um, and I had heard about urban farming and had visited some local gardens within the city. And that's what kind of sparked my interest in, okay, let's build out a space that's inclusive of seating and dining and arts. Um, but let's make the focus on creating opportunities for a new food system in this neighborhood. Um, and just over the course of the year, we've been really grateful to 
work with over 10 families and affording them produce. Uh, we've been able to train and employ um, uh, local laborers with green job employment and just assist, uh, assist family members with other resource needs, um, whether that be technology, whether that be access to healthcare um, through our partnerships with UMDMJ. We really look to bring a lot of these resources into our, our current revitalization space um, until we can get to a place where we want to redevelop. Um, which brings me to my next point about uh, placemaking as we, as we use this strategy right now. Um, this is a temporary fix because we don't own the property. Um, but essentially, if we were ever in a space to own, we'd like to see ours, uh, our initial or pilot farm become a farm to table co-op where um, we'd have the opportunity to um, actually grow food, food on site, um, cook that food um, at a, you know, at fair market price, and also, you know, have uh, our records established with the Farm Service Agency and USDA so that the food that we actually grow can be sold to local nonprofits um, and schools and grassroots organizations, um, similar to the work that Farm to School is doing currently. Um, we would be able to create a more sustainable business model uh, uh, with additional infrastructure like greenhouses um, and just technology in general. but. Um, as we operate today, we are a community space, we are an urban farm or garden, and we're a place where arts, culture, and community can all thrive. Our second site is located in the South Broad Street neighborhood, which is a little different. Um, that's closer to downtown. Um, it's a lot more residential, but it's located as well on a main street, um, located not far from Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District. Uh, which currently operates a farm and is a nonprofit dedicating to the revival dedicated to the revival revitalization of the Lincoln Park area. Um, and so this neighbor, uh, this particular site uh, is over 5,000 square feet and was once a historic farm. Um, a gentleman by the name of Mustafa operated this farm for quite a while. Um, and unfortunately, uh, it, the space became, um, you know, really overwhelming to handle. And so the city, uh, was looking for someone to, you know, help bring the space um, to a uh, a place where you know people could continue to convene around agriculture and where people could uh, could learn. So we are currently in the process of revitalizing that space, but in the hopes of redevelopment, uh, it'd be really interesting to see what a shipping container business would look like um, on this property. Uh, this shipping container business could contain uh, a juicery and a yoga studio. Um, and then again, just would afford us a lot more flexibility in being able to grow year round, because as you can see, we have greenhouses on top of, uh, on top of our uh, shipping containers. And we went with shipping containers because our city um, currently has a, um, a uh, city with uh, uh, citizens without address uh, village, as they're calling it, um, where they've repurposed shipping containers into uh, temporary housing uh, for for homeless individuals. And we see the the benefit um, in being able to use something like a shipping container, something that could have been used for another purpose, um, and building it out so that uh, we could create opportunities for green job employment. Uh, localized food, and even visiting um, as far as tourism concerned, I think it would be really interesting for our city to take a look at what a lot of our farmers are thinking about in terms of their redevelopment projects and how they could uh, potentially play a role in tourism when we have visitors come to our city. Um, yes, that's about what I have for today. Thank you for having me. This year's conference was made possible with the support of Whole Cities Foundation, the Newark Community Food System, and the Rutgers Landscape Architecture Department. To learn more, visit us at www.sasglocal.com or follow us on our social media outlets.